Good evening, everybody. My name is Mike Medjel II, and I will be your judge for this month's photography contest. A little bit about myself. I am a professional commercial and landscape photographer based out of Allen, Texas. I've actually had the pleasure of coming in to speak to your club about my severe weather photography, so if you were there for that evening, I thoroughly hope you enjoyed it. A quick tidbit about the way I'll be judging tonight. First and foremost, I'll be looking at the images technically to see if their exposure is on, if they're in focus, and to make sure that the white balance is where it should be. Secondly, I'll be looking compositionally at the photograph. Does it catch my eye? Are there leading lines, patterns, repetition? Does it capture a precise moment? And finally, I'll be looking at the moment itself. How difficult was this image to capture? Was this something that can take hours of planning? Or was this something that was completely spontaneous? All that influences how I'll be scoring my photographs. So with that said, I'm ready to take a look at these images and get to placing some awards. Thanks. Alrighty, so let's get the ball rolling with the judging of the beginner category. First up, with a score of 8, is Union Dead. Although the photographer nailed the exposure and the focus on this image, the composition lacks a true subject. It's a bit confusing. I don't know if my eyes should go to the tree, or if they should go to the tombstone, or what exactly the subject is. Next time, the photographer needs to allow for a more definitive subject, and that will appeal to a broader audience. Next up, with a score of 9, is Clyde. This is a nice little portrait of a, what appears to be an orangutan. The overall composition is not too shabby. I believe the photographer could have done a little bit better job by getting lower and getting a, uh, a bit more of the orangutan's face in the shot. The lighting is a bit harsh too. It looks like a flash was directed towards the subject, and that's evident by the highlight on the middle of the subject's forehead. Next time, maybe take your flash and bounce it off a ceiling or point it back just a little bit. That way I'll get a more diffused light and you'll lose that really harsh light on the uh, subject's forehead there. Next up is our first honorable mention, Popcorn Kernel with a score of 10 by Vincent Carroll. This is a nice macro of a popcorn kernel, nice contrast, and also a nice control of light. The highlights aren't blown out at all, which is pretty difficult to do when you're shooting a white object at a macro distance. The only improvement that I would suggest is next time, the image seems to be cropped a little bit close on the right-hand side, and also the blacks in post-processing look like they were crunched a bit too much, so we lose those edges around the outside of the kernel. Next time, try not to crunch the darks as much. Leave those edges and give a bit more detail to them. Next up is our second honorable mention with a score of 11, Harry Rock by Aaron Lesher. This image is a nice detailed image of uh, just what the title says, a Harry Rock. The composition, the exposure, focus, everything was very nicely done about this image. The only thing that I would have liked to see is possibly getting a bit lower and closer to the subject if possible. I'm not a fan of just having no horizon on the background. So if you were to get lower and reveal maybe the beach or the horizon, keep it that shallow depth of field, but just bring in a little additional element like that, it might add more to this image. And it's also utilizing a very clean background, but yet one that has a little bit of uh, life to it. The shallow depth of field allowed for the items in the background to not be distracting, but to also set kind of an environmental portrait though. Things I would change up about this image is next time just possibly get a little bit lower, get more on an eye level with your subject, and that'll create more of an intimate portrait. Next up is our second place image with a score of 12 called Cowboy's Coffee by Lulu Warren. This is a great still life photograph. Not sure if the photographer used natural light or an off camera strobe to light this image, but the dramatic lighting across the scene just works wonderfully. It's not necessarily the most entertaining of scenes, but for being in Texas, the scene works well. It's a uh, very nice image that I could see actually being hung up in a wall of a home. So good job. For the beginner category is Kestrel Colors with a score of 13 by Brenda Armstrong. 
This is a fantastic wildlife photograph. The contrast amongst the colors is just amazing. The detail on the subject is spot on, and the composition is a well-balanced composition. Nice choice of focal length, and also a nice choice of depth of field, creating that blurry background which really allows your eyes to just be onto the bird. The only suggestion I'd have, and this is maybe a little bit picky, but is to maybe next time try and get a even more intimate shot where the bird is looking directly at the photographer. Regardless, this is a fantastic shot and congratulations on first place. Maybe next time try shooting through a white umbrella. That might diffuse your light and make it as harsh. And also the time of day in which this image was shot seems to be still a little bit before that golden hour late in the afternoon. So wait a little bit longer. Let the sun get lower on the horizon. You're going to get that nice softer light, that nice golden light behind your subject. And not such a harsh rim light. Next up with a score of 9 is Reflections on Sunrise. This image had a lot of potential. The overall scene was great, the light was great, the color was great, but the biggest impact on this image negatively is the fact that it's actually out of focus. When you're at locations like this shooting landscape, you have quite a bit of time. So really make sure that you nail your, your sharpness of your image before you walk away from your scene. The balance between the statue and the gazebo in the background works great with your composition. The image just seems a little bit boring. Using a subject such as a statue is pretty boring because there's no life to it. The statue is just that, it's a statue. I think I would have preferred this image to be much more focused on the gazebo, possibly using the reflection in the water and some of the leaves or the ground as a foreground elements. So next time, Ignore the statues and look at what you've got behind it. Moving on with a score of 9 is Waiting for Passengers. This image utilizes the water really nicely, utilizing that reflection there. It's got some nice vibrant colors to it, but it seems to be shot once again in the wrong time of day. A little bit later in the afternoon when you get that golden light would have made this image really, really pop. Also, I'm not sure what that is in the top right corner of the frame. It's some sort of white. Maybe it looks like a building or some sort of structure. But I find that quite distracting. So possibly moving further over to your right and cutting that element out of the frame, it would have created a much cleaner background and would have put the focus directly on the boat. So try that next time. Up next with a score of 10 is Beginning the Harvest. This image has some nice contrast between the water and the field. Also the red part of the tractor with the field is some nice contrast. It's a balanced composition with the tractor in the bottom left hand side of the frame and the lines from its path moving through the right side of the frame. It's still just a little bit boring of an image. I would have liked to see possibly some wheat being kicked up or just something else going on in the image. So next time, look and see if you could see any sort of uh, action to add to your image here. have with it is it looks like it was processed via HDR, and that's evident in the amount of noise that is in the image. So next time, try masking using adjustment layers and skipping over the HDR route because it really degrades the quality of the image. Next up, with a score of 10, is Fog on Danube. The photographer did a good job controlling the exposure on this image and not blowing out the highlights. It's pretty easy to do, actually, with fog. You get that overwhelming white in the sky, and before you know it, it's blown out. So the photographer did a good job there. There's two things that I don't like about the image. First off is the pretty strong vignetting going on around the image. I find that actually quite distracting. Also, the amount of negative space up in the upper half of the composition, it needs something to it. It would have been nice to see a flock of birds come by or something like that to fill the image. If there's nothing like that, I would have preferred to see the image shot a bit lower, cutting out more of the sky and giving more of the water. 
Next up, with a score of 10, is Lingering Storm over Teton Range. This is a really nice landscape image. Love the dramatic skies, the detail in the mountains, and the feel this foreground. I feel like the image though is a little bit overprocessed. Perhaps the saturation in the yellow and the greens was pushed a little too far. Also, the clouds on the left hand side of the frame, the white part, seem to be a little bit hot. This could be controlled by possibly using a gradual neutral density filter next time, which will help you expose for both the sky and the ground in this image. But overall, a good job. see done a little bit differently is maybe a little bit more action going on with the polo match. The ball is just laying there on the ground. It would be nice to see a, a cool shot with the ball up in the air or the rider taking a swing at the ball. Something a little bit more dramatic than this scene. Next up with a score of 11 is bicycles and windows. I like this image because it's a scene that most people would actually just walk right on by. But the photographer noticed a uh, compelling composition and also such amazing detail and different patterns. I love the detail in the rocks, I love the detail in the bricks, I love the patterns in the windows, also in the bricks and the rocks. The only thing that I would have liked to see a little bit differently in this image is perhaps you know, somebody walking by, a little bit blurred out, maybe a little bit of motion or a little bit of life to the shot. But overall, good eye by the photographer and way to capture a scene that most of us wouldn't see. The framing using the tree branches around the outside of the composition, it works very nicely. The sky is a very dramatic sky, but what really hurts this image is the extreme HDR that was done to it. The haloing around the edges in some spots, and also the extreme noise that is created by the processing really hurts and really brings down the quality of the image. Next time I would say try this image in just black and white, or use luminosity masking to really do this image nicely. Next up is our first honorable mention with a score of 11. Winter Mist by Robin Darun. What I like about this image is the nice motion blur that the photographer captured in the waterfall. Also I like the foggy scene in the background. It's a nice uh, option for a black and white image. What really hurts this image though is the post processing up in the sky. You can actually see clone marks from where the photographer may have removed some sort of subject or something up there in the sky. You could see the streaks from where the brushes were. So next time pay a little bit more detail up there. You might be able to use a spot healing brush which will help eliminate those very distinct lines up in the sky there. Next up is our second honorable mention with a score of 12, San Angelo Lily Pond by James Berry. This image has got a beautiful contrast to it, a very, very nice pop of color. Uh, I love seeing down below the water as well and seeing where the stem extends down below it. The only thing that's hurting this image, in my opinion though, is the composition needs to be cropped in a little bit tighter. I'm not a fan of seeing the leaf in the bottom right hand side of the, the frame. I find that a bit distracting. And the negative space in the top right uh, part of the frame as well is a bit distracting. If the photographer were to crop in the composition a little bit tighter, perhaps just bringing it close to the edge of that next bulb sticking out of the water, that would make this image much better. Okay, next up is our third place image with a score of 12. Sunset at the River, Rome, Italy by Oscar Rolden. This image is a very breathtaking landscape shot. Love the time of the day in which this image was shot. The beautiful colors in the sky, beautiful colors in the trees as well. I also like, I don't know if you guys see it, but there's some birds flying around in the sky too, so it's just a very captivating moment. The only thing that I suggest for the photographer to try next time is actually two things. One, perhaps waiting for something to come through the river as well, maybe a boat or a gondola or some sort of su subject in the river. And also the processing in the sky it might be a little bit overdone too, so maybe bring down that orange just a smidge. Overall, great image, very compelling skies, nicely done. Here we go, our second place image with a score of 13, Wedding on the Water by James Edward. 
This is a beautifully done wedding image. I love the leading lines of the pier leading out to the subjects. Love the control that the photographer had of the sky as well, not blowing that out. The emotion is absolutely priceless on the bride's face. It's just a very well done wedding shot. Any uh, suggestions that I may have are very minute. Uh, I would suggest maybe seeing a little bit more of the groom's face. And also maybe not as much contrast next time. Maybe bring that down just a smidge. Overall, nicely done job by the photographer. detail of the feathers in this image uh, and the expression on the birds. It's just a very nicely done image. It's one of those scenes that it, it appears the photographer had to wait quite a while for and or get really lucky, one of the two, and uh, just love it. Very nicely done, nice composition. The depth of field in the background is a nice shallow depth of field which allows your focus to remain just on the birds. So nicely done and congratulations. So here we go with judging for the advanced category. First up, with a score of seven, is three in a row. Interesting image. It looks to be three geese, their feet in the water. The composition is just kind of boring. Nice reflections in the water, but the lighting is not that great. The contrast isn't that great. It's just, it's just a very kind of dull image. I would like to see some sort of action in this image or some sort of life to this image to make it a little bit better with a score of 8 is reaching. Nice action shot here, except the biggest negative on this image is the fact that it is out of focus. There is actually nothing in this image that is in focus, so although it's a fantastic action scene, the fact that it's out of focus really hurts it. So next time when shooting these images here, really make sure you nail your focus and also what you submit make sure it's in focus because that is a huge impact on the image. Next up with a score of 8 is Dancers at the Kalachi Festival. Uh, it's a fun moment, nice color, nice exposure, the image is in focus but overall it's just kind of dull as well. There's a lot of clutter in the background so there's no true distinct subject in this image. Also the time of day in which this image was shot, and I know this is beyond the photographer's control, it's just still a little early in the day so you have some really nasty shadows coming across the faces of the subjects. Nice moment though, but definitely would try a different scene next time. Next up with a score of 9 is Maine Blueberries. It's a nice macro shot, beautiful color to it. Nice detail, but two main issues to the image are one, it's out of focus, and two, that there's a, quite a bit of grain in the background. So I don't know necessarily if it was out of focus or if this image was just cropped way in and the sharpness of the, the camera wasn't allowing for this kind of detail, so you got more noise or what the exact issue was there. But next time, I'll try shooting this with a, definitely a macro lens and a camera that has a high megapixel, which will allow you to crop in if need be without losing too much quality. A little bit harsh on the contrast, though. The subjects tend to blend in with the, the cannon and also the tree in the background there. Would love to see, you know, their black clothing upon a white background. But, you know, that's kind of out of the control of the photographer as well. So you did what you could on this image, but just the cluttered background with the subjects makes it a little bit difficult to stay focused upon. Next up, with a score of 9, is Stormy Weather. So if you guys know me, automatically I like this one just for the title. But in reality, it's a nice composition. I love the symmetry in the image. I love the leading lines up to the tree. I love the clouds in the background, which are called under lattice asperatus clouds, and they're actually quite rare to see around here. The issues, though, that I have with this image are, it looks like the shadows were pulled out a lot in the tree, so it looks kind of flat. It almost looks photoshopped in, and also the masking around the edges. There's quite a bit of evidence of spots that just didn't receive any sort of masking, so you have these white splotches. 
So next time masking out, make sure you refine those edges nicely so they blend, so you don't have any white spots showing through. But good job with the overall composition. Next up, with a score of 10, is a Bugs Nightlife. Love the detail in the shot. Love the detail of the Volkswagen symbol. Most importantly though, I love the reflection of the theater light in the paint. That was a very creative eye that the photographer had to incorporate that in. And it's also framed up nicely within the, uh, the edge of the car there. Overall though, anything to improve this image, I would like to see a little bit more color if possible. And also there's quite a few sensor spots, dust particles or something like that that was on the sensor that are throughout the image that could very easily be cloned out. So next time, make sure to go through with that healing stamp and to get those out of there. This is Boat on the Tributary. I really like the fact that the photographer composed the image like this. It's got a nice balanced composition to it. Nice exposure, but the issue that I have with this image is it appears that the actual focal point of the image was on the buildings behind the boat. Looks like the boat is a tad out of focus, but the buildings behind it are quite sharp. So I don't know if that was done by mistakenly putting the focal point on the buildings and not the boat, or if this was shot via using a tripod and a slower shutter that the boat was rocking back and forth just a little bit, uh, giving it that softer look and that out of focus look. Either way, next time really make sure that your focus is going to be on the boat, especially if that is your subject. nicely and it flows very nicely along the sand there as well. Nice color throughout the image. Like I said, not usually a fan of composites, but this one caught my eye, so nicely done. And I love the actual size too, as well, the scale with the photographer keeping his subject much smaller than the shells. It just makes a very surreal scene and it's a fun image. Good job. Next up is our second honorable mention with a score of 11, shot by Karen Cheney called Indian Express. What I liked about this image is the fact that first off they got into a Rangers game with a longer lens, so good job there. Secondly though, is just the action of the image. The facial expression on the runner, the dirt being kicked up, the fact that both his feet are in the air, great job capturing that moment. The only thing that I'd like to see differently is possibly having the ball come through the frame as well. So maybe, I don't know if the ball is in uh, Moreland's hand or if it's being thrown to him, but seeing the ball come across just at the same time as the runner creates a very nice action scene. But good job and keep up the good work. Next up is our third place image entitled Take a Bow by Linfen Huang. And this received a score of 11. I love the macro shot. I know this shot's been shot over and over and over, but the fact about doing water droplet macro shots is that each one is different. Love the fact that the photographer uh, changed things up and used a colorful background to reflect into the water to give this image some great vibrancy. Love everything about this image. Only suggestion that I can say is next time maybe try and get that water drop right as it separates from the base of the water there, so it's just kind of floating by itself there. But overall, great job by the photographer and keep up the good work. Capturing a beautiful composition of this bird. Love the feathers coming out from both sides of the bird, the symmetry throughout the image, the balanced composition, and the detail on the face of the bird. Love the fact that, I know you did this on purpose, that it has green and orange in its beak. I know that was all you, Erwin. Good job there, but just love the pop of color. The only thing that I could see about this image is that it's got a little bit of noise in it, so maybe using a noise reduction tool would help you get rid of that, and I don't know if that's from possibly the quality of the camera sensor or if that was from cropping in or what that noise came from, but I know using a noise reduction software would really help get rid of that. Overall though, great job.
Beautiful, vibrant colors and what detail. Absolutely love this image. Also love the fact that the photographer added water droplets to the leaves. It just really accentuates the flower as well. Overall, I, I love it. The only suggestion I have is possibly crop in a little bit more from the right hand side to uh, give the image a more balanced composition. What a beautiful shot. Congratulations. Alrighty, here we go. Judging for the Masters category. First up, with a score of 8, is Mustang. I love the vibrant reds in this image, the nice contrast amongst the chrome, the pattern, rep or the repetitious patterns with the lights, but overall the image is still kind of a bit boring. It doesn't have anything that just really screams out to capture your attention and to keep your attention on the image. The image, though, seems to be a bit dark. I can't really see the reds or the yellows all too well on the flowers. There's no detail. So maybe next time pull the slider for the shadows a little bit to the right to pull out some detail there to see if you can bring some brightness and some color to those flowers there. Overall, though, I like the composition. It just needs to be brightened some. So next up, with a score of 10, is Festival 1. This is a very nice black and white image, although it's needing to be cropped in a little bit tighter. There's quite a bit of negative space on the top and the right sides of the frame. I would go ahead and crop it in tighter and that'll bring your viewer's attention directly onto the, the boat there, the float. Also the lights from, looks like the parking lot there, are a bit distracting. So maybe work on stamping those out next time and that will bring your viewer's attention directly onto the float and nothing but. Next up, with a score of 11, is Socotra Fisherman Casting Net. It's a beautiful action shot, and what I like about it is not just the action, but the expression on the fisherman's face, and the photographer shot this at the perfect time of day to shoot a shot like this. Looks to be right at or just before sunset, so you have that nice, subtle, soft light, and it just works. It's a beautiful image. Would have liked to see some sort of clouds in the sky, but of course that is beyond our control. But nice job by the photographer. Next up, with a score of 11, is Havasu Creek 2014. This image has some very rich color to it, very vibrant. Also, the photographer was wise enough to shoot this on a tripod and to really cut out as much light as possible to give themselves the ability to capture a bit of motion blur during midday light in the river. So good job there, nice thinking. The only critique that I really have is on the bottom left hand side of the frame there's a rock that has a bit of sunlight on it that highlights a little bit distracting. So personally I would have cropped that out and that would allow your focus to not even be teased over into that corner there. Next up with a score of 11 is Santorini Staircase. First off, props to the photographer for having the eye to see a composition like this. Most people walk right by without even paying attention to it. It's got some very nice shapes to it and also some very nice light to it. Things that I would change though or fix is on the left hand side of the frame it appears that the vertical lines lean off to the left so I'd work on straightening that or using your lens perspective to fix that. Also the item, I can't tell what it is exactly in the middle of the frame and the white is a little bit distracting so I would have stamped that out. And also, I would have shot this a little bit higher to eliminate the bit of blue sky creeping in beneath the arch. But besides that, great job to the photographer. Next up, with a score of 12, is don't sit out on the fence. Uh, the photographer did a great job capturing repeating patterns and using the fence as a nice leading line throughout the image. They also didn't blow out the sky and captured some nice definition in the clouds. The processing on this one is, appears to be a little bit harsh though. The blacks are crunched almost a little bit too much to my liking and it just seems a bit mushed together. So maybe next time take a little bit more patience and practice on the post-processing here and don't crunch those blacks just as much and maybe uh, pull out your midtones a little bit to create a little bit more contrast where you would have crunched those blacks.
but the plane looks like it's just sitting there on the ramp, not moving. I would have liked to see a little bit more contrast in there, pop out those reds more, pop out the blues more, and also maybe crop in from the left-hand side a little bit to eliminate that water tower out there and also the radio tower. But overall, nicely done. Love the composition, love the action. Good job. Next up, with a score of 12, is Tranquil Sunset. Very nice seascape. Love the motion in the water. The photographer did a very good job on shooting this at a little bit longer shutter speed to, to capture that motion there. The biggest critique that I have on this is uh, two things. One's very minute, and that is on the right side of the frame. It looks like there's some people on the beach there, so I would have stamped them out. Also, the masking around the edge of the arc and the landscape, you could see some haloing going on there or a little bit of chromatic aberration. I would have worked on refining that edge a little bit in your mask there. That way you don't get that subtle glow. But overall, very, uh, very nice scene. Next up, with a score of 12 as well, is the old and new of Rome. I like the overall composition of this image. Some very nice repeating patterns with the columns that lead you over to the next building. Love the tones in this image as well. The blacks seem to be crunched a little bit too much, so you lose that detail in the trees and the leaves up there. So maybe pull your blacks back just a little bit on this. But nice, nice definition in the sky as well. And I also uh, just not a big fan of the the frame around the image as well. I would just take that off. But um, what a beautiful scene and good job. This is a composite. Great job. The only things that I don't like is it looks to be a tad out of focus, which gives me the suggestion that it maybe was shot indeed underwater. But then again, when I look around the subject's arms and hair, it looks like there's a bit of a glow or a halo, and I can't tell if that was possibly from being masked into this scene or what is going on there. So if it was masking, then go ahead and work on refining that edge a little bit. If it's just a glow, then it's just a glow. But good job. Work on that focus a little bit, and if this was indeed shot underwater, good job with the creativity. Next up, with a score of 13, is Waikiki 2F. It's a very nice still life scene. Also, I guess you call it seascape as well. I love the, the tones in the image, the color, the fact that the photographer did indeed set this up on a tripod to get a little bit of motion in the water. The only critique that I do have is the masking or the chromatic aberration along the clouds in the background. It's quite distinct, so work on refining that edge or using techniques to remove chromatic aberration. It also seems that the saturation in the sky is pushed a little too much, so it looks like there's a little bit of noise that is a result of that. So maybe pull back the, uh, the blues a bit to get rid of that noise or use a denoising software to create a smoother look in the sky. Alrighty, here we go. Our honorable mention with a score of 13 is Window to Canyonlands by Dennis Fritchies. First off, I know how hard this shot is to get. Not only do you have to wake up early to capture sunrise, but you're also competing with quite a few other photographers at Mesa Arch for position and to get this spot. So congrats for waking up early. Secondly though, as far as composition goes, a nice composition. It's very well balanced, beautiful light, and also a uh, beautiful color. The only suggestion that I have is it looks like the color might have been pushed a little bit too much. So some parts of the image look a little oversaturated. The sky in particular and the orange glow on the, the lower end of the rocks. So maybe pull back the oranges and yellows a bit and the blue just a smidge. And then you'll have yourself a very, very nice image. Good job. Next up is our third place image. Old Saloon on a Starry Night by Marie Hansen. This received a score of 13. First off, props. I know how difficult uh, as well the night sky photography is. It's very, very hard to get your focus down and then to find a composition that works. So good job here. The only two critiques that I have are one, it looks like the image may be just a smidge out of focus. That can be fixed with a little bit of sharpening. And then also the color is a little bit oversaturated on the foreground. So maybe pull those uh, colors down a little bit 
And then actually another edit too would be to crop out the, looks like a gravel road right there in front of the store. Uh, so just that'll allow yourself a much cleaner composition. But overall, good job. And I know that this shot is a difficult one to get, so very well worth the effort. Next up is our second place image with a score of 14, Ector Glasses by Jose Artiles. First off, when I saw this image, I literally said, wow, out loud, very unique image, very outside the box, so great job there. The only critiques that I've got on it is I would have shot it possibly a little bit lower. That way you could eliminate the four lights reflecting into the helmet there. I find those a little bit distracting, but overall, this is just a very unique composition, very fun image. Good job there. One last uh, quick detail is to not push the processing too much because you do have a little bit of noise in the corners. Um, so once again, you know, you could use a noise reducing software to eliminate that or just not push the editing that far. Good job though. So here we go. First place for the Masters category is with a score of 14, Mother and Baby in the Snow by Charlotte Hasty. And this image is absolutely beautiful. Love the contrast of colors, love the emotion, just love the clean background. Your eyes know exactly where to go. The only critique that I would have for this image is to possibly do a little bit of post-processing in the eyes of the animals to make them pop a little bit more. But man, this is a beautiful shot. Way to uh, stay on your toes for this and way to really nail it. Good job and congratulations. The water droplets, everything just works so lovely in this image. It is a uh, very, very beautiful shot, and Don, congratulations, you deserve it. Alrighty guys, well that's it. First and foremost, I want to send out a huge thank you to each and every one of you guys for allowing me to judge this month's competition. It was a complete honor to get to see how you guys see the world through your lens. Um, I want to wish each and every one of you guys the best of luck in your future endeavors to always keep your camera handy 